Dear students, welcome to the problem solving session on inverse Laplace transform. In all our previous session, we learned what is mean by Laplace transform and how to solve problems on various properties. In today's session, we are going to move to the inverse Laplace transform. Suppose if L of f of t is going to be my capital F of s, then if I take inverse on both sides, L inverse of capital F of s is equal to f of t, where L inverse is the inverse Laplace transform operator. So, we just recall the formulas what we learned in our previous session. L of e power a t is 1 divided by s minus a. Here, if we take inverse, we are going to write this as L inverse of 1 by s minus a is equal to e power a t. Then, L inverse of 1 by s plus a is e power minus a t. L inverse of a by s square plus a square is sin a t. Sometime, in exam point of view, you simply get L inverse of a square plus a square. In this time, you have to multiply and divide by a, then you can get the answer sin a t by a. Or otherwise, simply, you can think a will come, you have to multiply and divide by a. Directly, you can write this as sin a t by a. For example, if you have L inverse of 1 by S square plus 9, it is going to be sin 3t by 3. L inverse of S by S square plus A square is obviously cos A t. Whenever you have negative in the denominator, you will have sin H A t. For the case of S, we have cos H A t. The formula L of t power n is equal to n factorial divided by s power n plus 1. So, L inverse of 1 by s power n plus 1 is t power n divided by n factorial. Hope you understand students. So, if they are asking L inverse of 1 by s cube, so you have to reduce 1 power. So, t square divided by 2 factorial. So, L inverse of 1 by s power 4, t cube divided by 3 factorial. It is easy for us to compute. You don't want to go for Laplace formula multiplying and dividing by n factorial. You can remember like this very easily. So, as I said, L inverse of 1 by S is 1. Now, keeping all this basic formulas in mind, let us write the properties in terms of inverse. So, if I take L of f of t is capital F of s and L of g of t is capital G of s. Then L inverse of if you are taking A into capital F of s plus B into capital G of s. This can be written as A into L inverse of capital F of s plus B into L inverse of capital G g of s and this is also true for negative sign. Next, shifting property. If L of f of t is capital F of s, then L of e power minus a t into f of t, we can write it as capital F of s plus a. Now, in the case of inverse, L inverse of f of s plus a is equal to e power minus a t into f of t. For example, if you have L inverse of 1 by S plus 2 whole cube. First, we have to see this S plus 2. By shifting property, we are going to write this as e power minus 2t. And then, L inverse of 1 by this cube remains same. So, my f of S plus A is going to become f of S. Therefore, S plus 2 will simply become S cube. So, we know the formula L inverse of 1 by S power n plus 1. We have to remember S power n plus 1. It is going to be t power n divided by n factorial. So, the solution for this problem is e power minus 2t 1 by s cube. So, t square by 2 factorial. So, it is going to be very easy. Therefore, L inverse of f of s plus a, it should be replaced by e power minus a t and then L inverse of f of s. That means, that means my f of s plus a will become e power minus a t f of s. Very important. This will be true when you have inverse Laplace transform. In the similar way, we can do for f of s minus a. So, keeping this properties and basic formulas, let us do some problems on inverse students. Find L inverse of 1 by s plus 1 by s plus 2 
plus s by s square plus 9. So it follows linear property. I can write this 1 by 1. We know L inverse of 1 by s is 1. L inverse of 1 by s plus 2 is e power minus 2t. L inverse of s. S means cos. S square plus 9, 3 square. So cos 3t. So this is a very direct problem. MCQ kind. Next. L inverse of numerator s plus 2 denominator s square plus 16. Now I cannot apply any formula. But I can split the numerator into two terms. L inverse of s by s square plus 16 plus L inverse of 2 by s square plus 16. Now this is okay. I can write this as cos 4t. But when I come to this case, my denominator have 16. So therefore, my numerator should have 4. But my numerator has only 2. So I can multiply and divide by 2. We get 2 into 2, 4. And 1 by 2 remains outside. So now I can write this as cos 4t plus 1 by 2 into sin 4t. Hope you understand students. Next. L inverse of 1 by S plus 2 whole square. So we have to apply first shifting theorem. So by first shifting theorem we know the formula L inverse of 1 by S plus 2 whole square will become e power minus 2 remaining L inverse of 1 by S square. So S plus 2 is replaced by S and we know L inverse of 1 by S power n plus 1 is t power n by n factorial. Here n is 1, t power 1 by 1 factorial. So e power minus 2 into t. This is my answer. Next, L inverse of S by S plus 3 whole square. Immediately our students what will do? Sir, teachers, replace S by, replace S plus 3 by S. What they will do? L inverse of, whenever you have a problem like S by S plus 3 whole square. Immediately our students will start the problem. Sir said replace S plus 3 by S. So we get e power minus 3t L inverse of S by S square. S S get cancelled. e power minus 3t L inverse of 1 by S. L inverse of 1 by S is 1. Answer is e power minus 3t. It is totally wrong. You should be very careful whenever you replace S plus 3 by S. You should not miss any S term. See this problem, this problem contains S in numerator as well as in denominator. So I cannot do just like that. Now what I have to do? To tackle this problem, see the denominator as S plus 3 whole square. Now I have to adjust this. So in the numerator, I am going to add and subtract with 3. Now I can split the numerator into two terms. That is L inverse of S plus 3 divided by S plus 3 whole square minus L inverse of 3 by S plus 3 whole square. Now this will cancel with this. We get L inverse of 1 by S plus 3 minus L inverse of 3 by S plus 3 whole square. Now I can take this 3 outside. We get minus 3 L inverse of 1 by s plus 3 whole square. Now we know 1 by s plus 3 is e power minus 3t minus 3 times using shifting property I can write this as e power minus 3t into L inverse of 1 by s square and we know that L inverse of 1 by s square is e power 1 by 1 factorial simply it is t so I can write this as e power minus 3t minus 3 into t into e power minus 3t even I can take this e power minus 3t outside I will be having 1 minus 3t next problem L inverse of 1 by s plus 1 whole square plus 16 in this case I can apply the shifting property directly because I have s only in the denominator so s plus 1 means e power minus t L inverse of 1 by s square plus 16 so as I said we have 16 in the denominator so we should need 4 in the numerator either you multiply and divide or you can directly write the answer e power minus t if the numerator consists of constant it is going to be sine so 4 is missing here I can write it as sine 4t by 4 or multiply and divide and you can write formally like this. So the solution is 1 by 4 e power minus t sine 4t. Next example L inverse of 1 by s square plus 2s plus 2. So here we should be very careful to solve the problem. I cannot continue the problem because it does not satisfy any of my basic formula or conditions. Now we have to rearrange it. See we have 
s square plus 2s plus 2. Try to write this with the nearest square. So s square plus 2s plus 1 plus 1. So I can write this as s plus 1 whole square plus 1. By doing this, I can easily achieve the answer. Now denominator consists of only s plus 1 whole square. I can write this as e power minus t l inverse of 1 by s square plus 1. We achieve this by using first shifting theorem. Now we know 1 by s square plus 1 is simply sine t. So the solution is e power minus t sine t. Now we have a different problem. We should be very careful here. I have numerator and denominator both. Yes, the same technique we are going to use. S square plus 6x plus 10. Now the nearest square s square plus 6s plus 9. Plus one because we can write this as s square two into three s plus three square plus one so s plus three whole square plus one but when you see the numerator it has s plus four but the denominator has s plus three so now you would have guessed what I should do s plus four I have to rearrange as s plus three plus one so it is easy for me now to tackle the problem so l inverse of s plus three Plus one divided by s plus three whole square plus one. Now split the problem into two terms. So applying first shifting theorem, s plus three s plus three I can replace by e power minus three t. We get l inverse of s by s square plus one. Here also e power minus three t l inverse of one by s square plus one. Now finally we know that. L inverse of s by s square plus one is cos t, and then L inverse of one by s square plus one is sine t. The problem gets over students. If you want, you can take e power minus three t as common. We have cos t plus sine t. So in this session, we solved many problems on inverse Laplace transform. Hope you get the idea how to tackle the problems. Thanks for watching. Hope you found this video helpful. Subscribe to our channel and share it to your friends. See you in the next video. Bye bye.